that is me in the back of a pickup truck with a bunch of elite combat veterans who are using mushrooms. I'm in it now. You're, oh yeah, you are. I'm in it now. And hunting. Your ancestors hunted. As a way to heal from past traumas. It didn't make sense to me either, but I can tell you right now, it worked. Let me explain how this experience with these, the most hardcore of combat veterans, some traditional ceremonies, that was intense, and the magic of our fungal world are playing a role in what I think may be the future of medicine. It's not what we have in medicine now. It's the polar opposite. <laughs> if you're like me, you've probably noticed that there is a mental health crisis sweeping across the country. Today, they say one out of five people lives with a mental health issue. Depression, anxiety, PTSD, and trauma are all different forms of mental health issues, and all are difficult to overcome. They have different causes, too. For the combat veterans, like this bunch I met up with in Texas, the statistics on PTSD coming back from war are shocking. Some statistics put the number of people with PTSD when they return at 30%. When I heard that this group in Texas was using mushrooms, hunting, and sacred ceremonies to heal these veterans, I knew I needed to learn more. I came here not only to observe this, but to figure out what was happening in my own immersive way. Gosh, it's really emotional. But let's not jump too far ahead in this story. This was exclusively for combat veterans of which I am not a combat veteran, but luckily the others did allow me to join them on their journey. Every person here is on their own healing path, but I think explaining this concept best might be done if I concentrate on the specifics. This is Ryan, someone who hadn't picked up a gun in 15 years. I was with him on day one. When I heard about it, it was something I absolutely had to be part of. He's a Marine Corps veteran. 9-11 inspired him to join the military. And just a feeling to do something um, for more than just myself. But the extreme battles had a huge impact on him. Lost 18 of my brothers to friendly fire from an A-10 and then several other just in like direct arms combat. And that was a hellacious <laughs> experience to say the least. Even more challenging I think is all like the catastrophic loss that you don't expect on the side. Right, all the civilian life that's kind of a, a, a casualty of it that you never think you're gonna have to see. Equally, if not more devastating to like me as far as like the traumatic scars that were left. This made reintegration hard. You experience all of that horror and that trauma and you come home to like a parade. All of us were like, we don't want any of this. I don't want to see any of this. I don't feel good about anything I did. And on top of that, some brain injuries. One of the more damaging pieces of having the brain injury was like motion at rest. So I had like this pretty severe vestibular dysfunction. I basically had 30% capacity is what they told me to a normal person's like fully functioning brain. So it got to the point where I like couldn't function anymore because I just completely eliminated all reserves. A few years ago, Ryan started working with an integrative therapist introduced me to non-Western medicine things. I started to do some sweat lodges and I started to do breath work and meditation, float tank therapy, all things that were inching me closer to like connecting with myself again. She then introduced him to psychedelics. So I was like, whatever you tell me to do at this point, I'm gonna do it because it's making my life better every single day. From his own account, the psychedelics really worked. My wife didn't even recognize me. Like the minute we talked on the phone before I came home, she's like, whoa. <laughs> like you can feel that energetic change and shift in somebody uh, before you even see them. Came home and just decided to put in the work. I felt way, way better, but what I realized, I was just step one of my healing journey. And it kind of showed me in a way, in like an intuitive way, how even for the most traumatic elements of that, really beautiful things came. I mean, every day I'm in awe of what, what's, what's possible. The use of psychedelics and healing makes a lot of sense to many people, but you still might be wondering, why are we hunting? No, I've never hunted before. So this be a first hunting experience as well my entire life. So together we walked through the Texas Hill Country with our trip guide Monsel in an attempt to use hunting to redefine for Ryan his own image of a hunter warrior. Now Monsel here is an incredible leader. He's designed this immersion and has now led over 50 of these trips, all with the idea of helping people, many of them like these veterans. It is a way to facilitate transformation for people, whether that be spiritual, emotional, mental, or physical growth. I use very specific tools, Native American, indigenous rites and rituals, hunting as a cornerstone practice and skill, and then psychedelics, specifically psilocybin, in order to provide connection to ourselves, to a per certain perspective that comes from hunting and killing animals. So with Ryan and the other veterans, we mixed in ceremonies like tobacco, 
Smudging, a sweat lodge. So we call it Nipi, that's in the Lakota language. It, it means a mother's womb. Go inside to purify yourself and to be reborn again. That was so freaking hot. It's good for people to get back to the roots of, the, of everything in the creation. And other traditions that our ancestors would use before they went hunting. And we also had psilocybin mushrooms in ceremony. And that all brought us to this moment. Ryan had his gun up and could see his first animal through the scope. The point of all this hunting in the Texas Hill Country is partly to reintegrate the healthy warrior archetype. It's part of who we are as humans, but in war it can be manipulated and cause moral injury, leading to PTSD. It's also about learning to feel your emotions. Ryan actually talked about how little feeling he had in the past. The further I got away from those events, the further I got away from having like any emotions. Like I was completely apathetic, wasn't really able to experience anything from fear to depression to joy, like all of it. I think like clinically they thought I was constantly depressed, but honestly I just, I had no idea how to have emotions anymore. And when you can't connect with yourself and understand that, then you can't connect with anybody around you. So it's like you're just going through the motions of being a human being, but not experiencing anything. When you're doing that at all, everything just seems pointless. From the outside looking in, people probably thought I had it together. Like, oh, he's got a wife, he's got a kid, he's got a job, he's holding it together. But like on the inside, like it was just empty. That's what this whole journey of healing has been for me. It's just like reigniting all of that inside me and reconnecting with that. It's just been completely transformational. Now I'll skip the killing part, but I will tell you, Ryan got an animal. He shot one, it was the first shot he's taken on, you know, another living being since war. He carried it home and its blood soaked his clothes, something you might think would bring up bad memories. But all of this is to change the way he views death, to make it something healthy. It, it symbolizes it very, very different. Putting it in the context of, of hunting, and not just hunting, but the way that Monsal is approaching hunting. Thank you for all the meat that this animal will provide us. Where it's like a deep connection with the land and with the animal and, and all of the gratitude that comes along with it. Oh. Oh. Um, you know, understanding where we and the animal fits in the whole cycle of things completely changes the story around it. And I believe as, as humans, we live through story and what we attach to them. It's taking this killer archetype and it's turning it on its head, no longer do they have to feel ashamed of this great power that they have as killers? Now they can feel empowered to be in service through this skill that they've developed. What I discovered was that each person, each veteran, was on their own unique healing path. They all told of a different story of how they got here, but we were now all united together with Monsal, with the others, with the mushrooms, and with the shared goal of healing and using hunting to change how they saw themselves and that warrior within. I found all of it incredibly inspiring. Thank you so much, man. Oh. This is just the beginning. This is the beginning. This is just the beginning, bro. I appreciate it. I must say, at the beginning, I had no idea how I was going to tell this story of mixing hunting and psychedelics because it doesn't seem to make sense. And you can't tell these stories without telling the transition of each individual person. I talked a little bit about Ryan. I would walk that path over and over and over and over again if I could get to where I am now. But I was able to talk to every single one of the guys and they had such incredible stories. And I'm all in. It was a great experience. Amazing experience, mm -hmm. overwhelmed. What I once thought was the worst thing in my life has now become one of the best and it can be the same for you. So is this the next phase of medicine? I hate to call it alternative medicine because if it works, we should incorporate it into modern medicine. All I can say is that Jay, the ER doctor, says this is not like working in the ER. Oh, it's the polar opposite. <laughs> it's the polar opposite. And there is nothing algorithmic about plant medicine. You get what you need, whether you think you need it or not. And that's the the scary and the beautiful thing 
about it, right? But from what I can see, this is a profound way to heal and something maybe every state should have. Well, Ryan said it best. We just need to make sure everyone has access to this, right? To community, to medicine. It's not just veterans. Everybody's got something. You're surprised at the veterans who go through and they realize it wasn't the military trauma. It was what came up in childhood or what came up from an ancestral standpoint where you're like, whoa, they've been holding on to that for generations. I think part of my personal message is just making sure that we don't stratify it. We don't say this is only for people who've experienced war. It's like, no, this, this should be for everybody to just become a better version. If this moved you in any way like it moved me, then you might be at the stage where you're thinking, well, I want to know more. How do I get this for myself? Or how do I get this for a friend of mine who is in need? I made a full list of resources down below. Uh, the trip, for instance, was perfectly legal through what Monsell is doing and the organization that he runs in Texas, and that is sacredhunting.com. He also wrote a book, which I would encourage you all to check out. And Ryan helped me compile links and resources for veterans, which are down below. Many of the veterans here on this trip had already been doing work through the missionwithin.org, which is a great resource for veterans. You might have also noticed I did not talk about my own personal experience on the trip. I thought I would just come along, enjoy the ride, observe what was happening, but nope, that's not how it worked. I was given exactly what I needed to by this experience, and it was intense. Well, this is the first step. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit and some of the behind the scenes of how this works. If you want to hear that, definitely subscribe because that's the next video. And finally, as a perk for my supporters over on Patreon, I'm doing a live stream with Monsel here this month where you can get on with him and I and you can actually ask questions. Where are the resources? How can I get help? Well, what is his philosophy? Why hunting? Which I hope we explained well enough in this video. But all of that is going to be over there. Links down below. What's most personal is most universal. So I'm sure there will be something that we go through that you can resonate with. And finally, I encourage you to share this with the person in your life, maybe a veteran or non-veteran, which you think might want to hear this message because who knows how the YouTube algorithm is going to treat this message. All right. Thanks everyone. We'll see you in the next video.